Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Alan Hathaway. I'm glad you joined me for this particular message. I want to talk to you about the first and the last. This is a continuation of my uh, series on Isaiah and looking at the ending in Isaiah. And I'll be looking at chapter 48 uh, today. One of the things that strikes me about this chapter is this term, the first and the last. It's found in verse 12 of chapter 48. It is a powerful concept, and Isaiah actually uses this particular construction three times in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and chapter 44, and here in chapter 48. Uh, it is used in relationship to the Messiah, the concept of the Messiah coming, and, and in that passage, it is used in reference to God, but if you look more closely at all of those statements, it is also a statement made of the Messiah and the Messiah's purpose. Jesus would apply this to himself in Revelation on three occasions in the book of Revelation. He would talk about himself being the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. He would also use a term, the beginning of creation in the book of Revelation. And so you see these concepts as they're, they're figured out. And, and particularly here in uh, Isaiah chapter 48, it speaks of God's creation as a part of that process. So you, you understand that this terminology is a way of saying God begins and ends everything. God is the statement of all that is. And so as we look at this, we understand that Jesus has the power to speak into existence all that is created. All that is comes from him. In John's gospel, the first chapter, it would say that Jesus is the word. And it uses that concept of the word. But he says, in addition, John says that that word is the very foundation of creation. Uh, he was at the very beginning of creation, and everything that has been created is created through him and by him. In Colossians, we are told that Jesus is uh, the very beginning of creation, and all creation comes from him. And in fact, all creation is sustained because of him. He is the very sustenance of creation. And so those things are, are part of Christian theology and thinking. In fact, they were such an important part of Christian thinking that one of the earliest symbols of Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega. The earliest Christian artwork that we have from the catacombs uh, involves Alpha and Omega and the Cairo symbol. The Cairo symbol are the first two letters of the word Christ in Greek, and they're very often superimposed uh, in what's called a monogram, and they indicate uh, Christ. And if they, in those letters are put together, uh, Cairo with Alpha and Omega, it is saying Christ is the beginning and the ending of all things. And in the catacombs, that meant an awful lot to the people that were, that were facing the end of their lives. They were trusting that Christ was the beginning and the ending of everything. They also show this concept of Alpha and Omega uh, with the concept that Jesus is the final judge of all things. His judgment is final. And if he speaks and says, I know you, you are mine, then we have eternal presence with him, eternal life with him. But if he says, I do not know you, then we are cast away from him. And so Christians express this in their art form. And if you look at uh, ancient Christian art in the catacombs and and later in the burials that took place uh, in the later part of the Roman world, you, 
you get this sense that the, at Christians were trusting in this truth that Christ was the final say on everything. He was the beginning, but he was also the final say. And that is valuable for us. We live in a world which seems to think that everything is, is just kind of progressing and moving on. But for Christians, we believe that God envisioned every part of creation from the very beginning. In fact, in eternity, God envisioned it all. And Jesus Christ was the means of that creation. Uh, the Father spoke the creation, and Jesus Christ through him spoke the creation into existence. But Jesus was also the means of that creation. That creation was existed through him and for him and by him. He is the eternal message of God from all eternity. It is what God intended to say. And in John chapter 1, we come face to face with this reality where it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. But John goes on to say that all of creation was created through him. He is the very word of life that gives life and meaning and, and purpose to creation. In Colossians, it tells us that he is, the, he is not only the, the substance of creation, but he is the sustenance of creation. For all creation is held together by him. He is the thing that, that holds everything together. And so as Christians, we look at this concept of the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the bookends, as it were, of creation. Everything exists in and through and by him. And so as Christians, we understand that even this redemption that we enjoy in Jesus Christ was something that God had planned before eternity. It was at the very beginning that God had looked down through his creation and understood this purpose, and this plan. As Christians, we grab hold of that because it gives us eternal meaning that goes beyond this moment, beyond what is happening in this circumstance. Even as we face the darkness of death, we are confident that Jesus Christ holds us in that darkness and that he will resurrect us and bring us into life and purpose forever in him. And so that is part of our excitement in who Jesus is. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the message of God from the very beginning of creation. And he is the redemption of God in the brokenness of creation. And that is a powerful truth. Isaiah looked forward to that, as Peter would tell us, that those people, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, looked forward and understood as it were, through a glass dimly, as Paul would say, the purpose of God. But when Jesus Christ came, we understand that God's purpose is to be found in him. And if we are found in him, that purpose dwells in each of us. And it is an eternal purpose that will bring resurrection to each and every Christian. And that purpose will last through eternity. It's a wonderful, wonderful truth. But we also know that when Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega in Revelation, he is saying, I am the final judge and arbiter of all things. Jesus would say at the end of Matthew's gospel, all authority has been given to me in heaven 
and on earth. We stand before him. His authority is final. I hope that you know Jesus Christ as the final authority in your life. I hope that if you, when you stand before him, he will say, I know you. You belong to me. If you don't, I invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to make a personal commitment to him and offer yourself to him. That's what he wants from you. Thank you for listening. God bless. Hope to see you in church.